Howdy folks. This is the Sand Mountain Modeler here. Um, never tried a YouTube channel. I follow a lot of guys on here in the modeling community that do it. Uh, seem like they have a lot of fun doing it and I sure do like to talk models so I thought I might give it a whirl and just see, see how we end up. Um, I've been doing models since I was a kid. Um, started out like like most of us i grew up in the late 70s and 80s and uh it was still kind of big at that time so got into it as a kid just you know i'd see a kit in walmart and i think man that'd be fun to put together and of course those of you that grew up in that era cars were everything to us um we had smoking the bandit duck's hazard and i think that's a big factor and why guys our age really love cars and um so you know i'd see a kit in walmart think, man that'd be so much fun and i guess i probably talked mama into buying me one one day and messed it up messed up the first several and uh but on into my teenage years i actually got to where i could you know throw a little paint on them and and uh follow the instructions a little better which it's not always the given it's gonna work out as you well know if you do models but um got to where i could do a little better and uh um of course you know got my license started driving started running with my friends and dating and eventually get married and got away from it for years and uh I, um, <clears throat> my cat's coming in here. Um, later in life, you know, um, a few years after I got married, I, I saw a magazine. I think I was on vacation in Tennessee, in Pigeon Forge or somewhere. Walking by the magazine, right? I saw a, a model car magazine, I guess it was. So I picked it up and started going through it and it lit the fire in me again. So I had, I was, I've always been a pretty big NASCAR fan. Um, started watching it in the early 90s, late 80s, something like that. So Davey Allison was a big, big, uh, I was a big fan of Davey Allison. I loved him. So I would had that kit for all those years and uh, I thought, well, I'm going to build this Davey Allison car and do it right. And I don't have it up here with me, or I'd show it on here, but it's down in my living room. And uh, maybe I'll show it sometime if I keep this thing going. But um, I actually did a lot of stuff on that car that I didn't think I could ever do. I uh, added some details and all, and uh, really laid a slick paint job on. Got me some aftermarket decals, you know. Learned that from the magazine that you could actually find aftermarket decals and this was probably in maybe 98 or 99 um so you know still didn't really have the internet to to access you know and uh, order things and find products and all but um I, I worked on that kit and you know we ended up having having our kids and Although I finished that model, it got put on the, the hobby got put on the back burner again. So, uh, I, I quit for a few more years and then maybe, I don't know, both my kids were born probably, oh, nine-ish, eight-ish, something like that. Um, the, I think I went into a hobby lobby and, um. Uh, it wasn't a local one. I was in another town. We we didn't have one in our town at that time. We do now, thank goodness. But I uh, walked into a Hobby Lobby and walked down the model aisle. And uh, again, lit the fire. I'm like, okay, I've, I've got to buy a model. And um, I bought, I think it was a 65 um, Chevrolet truck. And I had been seeing online uh, people doing weathering and stuff on them. 
I wanted to give my give a give a try at that. So I, I actually it turned out really good for my first time doing any kind of weathering. And you know maybe I'll show that one again. It's downstairs in my in my case. So, um, but that lit the fire, and I've been going ever since. And uh, you know I'm like all of us. I get in lulls sometimes and don't build as much. Life gets in the way and. You know, you, you can't play all the time. Sometimes you have to work and do other things, but um, I still like to play when I can and, and uh, still time from other things when I can to do some modeling. But um, anyway, that's kind of my backstory and uh, been building fairly consistently since, like I said, 2008 or nine, something like that. And uh, like I said, been following a lot of guys on Instagram and YouTube and and uh, Facebook. Um, there's just so many, so many resources out there available for us now that they didn't used to be. And uh, you can take somebody that's you know already grown and and never touched a model and wants to try it. They can learn how to do some really good stuff to really make that first model not not so sucky you know <laughs> like like most of us went through when we were younger but uh you know it's still a learning curve and there's a lot to it and uh um but but yeah it's it's a great time for our hobby and you know it seems to really be booming i mean any of you that keep up with it know there's several companies you can order from there's hobby lobby carries a pretty good supply of materials and kits all the time and um you know you may have a local hobby shop in your town if you do support it because you know we always need to support small business and uh you know anybody that's got a passion for the for the hobby you know try to try to help and try to support and that's what i want to do and uh you know on this channel i'll be offering tips and tricks and maybe i don't know maybe do some unboxings you see my stash behind me um not as big as some guy's stash but i got a pretty good bit of kits to do um but it's more of a collecting thing um i'm sure all of you guys go through the same thing if you've been in it a while you see a kit and you just gotta have it and don't really know when you're gonna build it but you just gotta have it. That box art looks so good. So good. And, uh, man, just something, especially something that hadn't been out in a long time. And then it comes back around, they reissue it, or maybe they come out with a kit with no tooling. And it's like, man, I've just got to have it. So that's how we end up with a huge stash and not nearly enough time to build them all. But, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll just go ahead and show you what I'm working on right now. Um, working on the the amt 70 chevelle ss and you know this is my second vinyl top i've ever done i'm not pleased with the finish it's too shiny on the vinyl top um had a little trouble had a couple wrinkles i couldn't get out um that grill right there i asked everybody on facebook what the, what the pitfalls of this kit were and they said the grill fitment but it's not in there completely straight, but I got it in there pretty good. You can see the kind of the uh, crease where the muffler meets the fender, but I don't know, it it fit pretty pretty good. Um, this is not going to be a showpiece. I've already made a few mistakes on it, and uh, so it'll be a shelf queen. But maybe maybe it'll end up a pretty good looker on the shelf. Um, Paint ended up good, uh, slicked her up, polished her. Um, like that, I like the color. I I catch myself doing reds and blacks and uh, oranges and all the faster colors, if you will. But I just want to do something more subdued on this one. Um, that champagne gold, I know that was a factory color for the Chevelles. And uh, got the black stripe, gonna do the black inside black insides you end up doing a lot of those but they were in a lot of cars back in the day so uh you know every once in a while you might do a color, color combination where you can do white or something and that that looks pretty good but 
blacks always seem like the go-to but uh anyway um you know if you like what i'm trying to do here give me a follow leave me a comment maybe tell me what you'd like to see um i don't know it all i'm you know there's a lot of guys out there that are a whole lot better than me but i get better with each build and as we all should even the the best guys um you know, there's always room for improvement. And, uh, you know, I, I see some of the guys on here, you know, the level of detail, especially on like the NASCARs and the drag cars, blow my mind. And I'm not saying I wouldn't ever be capable of that, but the patience that it requires to do something like that, I may not have it. So, you know, I throw in some details once in a while and, uh, you know, I've done plug wires on a few cars and, you know, tried to do a little bit of wiring on the engine and things and, and, uh, you know, some interior t detail, seat belts, a little photo etch here and there. But, uh, you know, I find for myself that when I try to get too involved, it kind of starts to take the fun away from me. And if I'm not having fun, I'm not going to do it because that's why I'm doing it. And, uh, you know, props to those guys that had the patience for that. And, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll just do one and knock it out of the park with all the wiring and details. But till then, I'm going to do what I have fun with and, uh, you know, keep the details to something I can manage. And, uh, but anyway... This is the Sand Mountain Mauler, and uh, it's this, I guess, is my introductory video. And uh, give me a follow, give, leave me a comment. Uh, let's uh, let's start a little community here. Thanks, guys. See ya.